SOP. If you've been doing business, you've probably heard about that acronym a few times already. Standard Operating Procedure or SOPs are probably one of the cornerstones of good delegation and an efficient team working together. If your business has been growing, you've probably heard this several times that you need to create processes to delegate, to outsource, to get yourself out of the operations and scale. SOPs in their very simple and clear definition are a detailed set of instructions that describes how to perform a routine or repetitive task consistently and effectively within an organization. Now I've put in bold the words that matter. We have detailed right here. Detailed means nothing can be missed. You have to make sure that your SOP has all the information required to perform that task. Next, routine and repetitive. Don't create an SOP until it's become a routine, repetitive task. I always say the first time, do it. The second time, outsource it. The third time, processize it. And the fourth time, automate it. Now, the more something is a routine, repetitive task, the more it needs to be processed and the more you need to have a quality process. Then you have consistently and effectively. And that emphasizes a sense of quality and efficiency. You need to make sure that SOP quality is consistent and you need to make sure that it's effective, that you go from point A to point Z the best way possible. If you heard about that word, but you haven't set that up properly, I'm going to show you exactly how to do so, how you should structure your SOP, how to set it up in a project software, and how to automate it so that each time a task is started, it triggers the right SOP and the person knows exactly what they have to work on. Let's start off by structure of an SOP. An SOP is made of six items, in my opinion. So the first item of an SOP is a goal, and I've highlighted that one in purple. You'll see why later. Then we have to know who's accountable, who has to do it. Then we have steps, video steps and written steps. I like to do both. And in the end, that's optional, and that's why I'll put those ones in a different color, having an FAQ and having revisions. An FAQ is going to be about answering the questions where there might be a doubt about something going on in the steps or the revisions. So having a history of what happened, say that SOP was created in 2023. If you do a 2024 revision, you just track and log that in the bottom of the SOP and explain what you changed so that the person that does it knows that a certain step of the process has changed. Again, the goal, what's the SOP about? What do we want to achieve? Who's accountable? a video, written steps, and optionally an FAQ and revisions. Now, if you want to keep it simple and focus on what matters, you can keep the four steps in the top. That's more than enough to get started with your SOPs. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to build up those SOPs and how to use AI and leverage AI to create a solid process that's fully utilizing the videos that you've created. That way you just have to record yourself doing the thing once, and then you can have a written process that's as accurate as possible and as efficient as possible for someone to do the task. Let's get started. The first thing you have to do is record yourself. Here is an example of me explaining an SOP on how to set up your notification channels in ClickUp. I'm using a software called Loom. If you've been recording videos of yourself, you've probably heard about it. What you're gonna do is record yourself. Say we have recording right here, it's 56 seconds. I've recorded myself on explaining how to do that. Then I'll go into transcript right here and there's a written transcript that I can just copy right here and I'll paste it into my favorite AI tool to create an SOP. A lot of people use ChatGPT. I personally like Claude. I feel like it outputs better written content. We're going to use Claude for this one, but you can do the exact same thing in ChatGPT. But before we go into our AI, I'm just going to copy and paste a prompt that I've created on how to write an SOP. And basically I will prompt the AI to write it like so. I'll get into Cloud 2, I'll just copy my prompt, and then from there, I'll just add my SOP at the end of the prompt. I'll get back into Loom, copy the transcript, go back to my AI, and add the transcript. It's basically going to generate an SOP on how to manage ClickUp notifications. As you can see, you have the step-by-step -step procedure, you have an FAQ, and you have everything set up. Now, this is just a starting point. Obviously, from there, you have to iterate and refine and simplify your SOP. After that, you can probably outsource that task and delegate that task. So make sure that your processes are as good as possible. Once I have this, the question is, where do I store this SOP in my project software? 
We're going to focus obviously on ClickUp, my favorite project software. Let's get back into our diagram. There are basically two main ways to store SOPs in ClickUp. Number one, you can store it in the task. The upside is that if you save that task as a template or automate it, or it's a recurring task, it's an easy solution. It will be stored either in the description or in the comments of the task. And each time a new task is created, you can see it right through there. You don't have to navigate somewhere else. There is nothing to link. And that's a great option. Option two is to store it in an SOP library. The upside of that method is that you have a single source of truth. You have a central location for all your SOPs and they're all stored in the same manner, in the same place, either in a list of tasks or in different pages of a document. Updates are visible and it's searchable. And my favorite part, each time you update the SOP, it also will appear in the tasks that already have been created. Whereas if it was in the template, the updates will not reflect in the past tasks because you'd have to go through each task one by one and copy and paste the updates of the SOP. Obviously, big upside of simplicity in the first method, big upside of consistency in the second method. The first method, it will require you to update each template one by one, probably impossible to manage once you start to have a solid system. The second method is really great because everything is centralized but it can lack visibility. You might have to do two different clicks when you call out an SOP. It's just going to be a link to a different document or a different task. Each method has its upside, but I'll explain you why my favorite method is to store them in a library. Let's start off by storing them in a task first so that you know that you can at least do that. You have two ways to store it in a task. You can store it in a task template as a description or as a comment. The upside of the description is that you can't miss the SOP but the description space is taken over by the SOP. Whereas if it was a comment, it's quite visible, it's on the right side, but if it's a small SOP, you might miss it. If someone comes into the project or the task, they'll probably miss the SOP, which will be all the way on top, so you have to remind them to have a look at it. I'll show you both methods. Here we have in the marketing a list for our newsletters, and we have SOPs for how to create these newsletters, and we don't want to explain them each time. If I open up that task right here, we have the SOP stored in the description of the task. As we said, we have the scope, the responsible, the procedure, the different steps we go through, and it's right in front of us. We can't really miss it. It's in the task. And even if we make our screen smaller or if we open up on mobile, we will not miss that SOP. It will be right in the task. That method is very simple. It's the easiest way to create an SOP because once you're done with that, you can just take that task and save it as a template and pin that template right here in the bottom. And each time you want to start a newsletter, you can just call out that template and it will pop up with the actual SOP on how to write a newsletter. Second way to do it, and that's the way I prefer out of the two actually, is to have the SOP stored right here in the comment section because it's pretty visible and you can use the description to actually work on the task. If you're filling in your newsletters right here, you have the SOP on the right side and you have the content of the newsletter on the left side. So that copywriter can just iterate and improve that newsletter content. But the thing is, if you start adding comments to the task, obviously the SOP will be all the way on top. So you might miss it at some point. I'm going to show you a better way to store your SOPs. We're going to get back to our diagram and talk about the two ways to store it as a library. The first way to do it is to have a task library. That's going to be a library where you can manage and access your SOPs. You can label them, you can groove them. It's basically a view. It's a list of all your SOPs as tasks. What I love about this method is that if you start to hire or if you start to externalize your work and get some contractors, you can give them access only to the SOP you need because ClickUp offers the ability to share only a specific task. Here we have SOPs for different steps, knowledge base management, client onboarding, the client operating system, sitemap design, our design system, how to write a new feature. All of this is stored right here. And what I love is that we can assign a responsible for the SOP. We can label the SOP. We can say this SOP is for tech, this SOP is for design, this SOP is for marketing. You can have a single source of truth, a single library of all your SOPs. We've just inserted the AI generated SOP right here and we can refine it, shorten the steps, remove some stuff. What I like to do is style it a little bit so I can add a banner that's in purple to highlight that part. I can just highlight that part in blue if that's important as well. And that way I have an SOP that's quite clear. I have the procedure, how to conduct the sitemap design with the client. 
But you can even add comments and go back and forth on how to improve that SOB if you wanted to. And you can leave it here and you can even handle it with statuses. If you have SOPs to create, for example, we have a new SOP on how to do color picking with a client for design. I'll just add the SOP, but I know I still have to write it down because it's set to an open status. You can even remind yourself to update this SOP by just adding a reminder. You're just going to remind me and add a reminder in one year time, for example, and you know you have to update it and improve it if it needs to be. Now that's one way to have an SOP library. What I love with this method is that you can just share some specific SOPs. You can say, all right, I wanna share how to write a bug to a specific contractor, a specific developer. I'll go into sharing and permissions and pick the people that wanna have access to that SOP. If that person is my contractor. I will give them comment access to the SOP and they can access the SOP only and they will not access the rest of the library. And that's what I love because you can go very, very granular. You can see who has access by going into the sharing and permission settings and see who has access to that SOP. Obviously sharing them one by one will be tedious. You can share the whole list to the people you need to share it to and just the SOP to the contractors. But if you need to manage granular permissions, that's the way to go. Well, the second way to create your SOPs is to store it in a document instead of a task. The upside is that documents are easier to organize. Uh, you're not going to have a bunch of tasks. They're all going to be with sub pages, very organized into your teams and into your processes. And it's also easier to read because you have more screen real estate compared to a task where you have the comments on the side. I recommend documents where you don't need to manage permissions because as of now, ClickUp doesn't let you share a specific page of a document. So you cannot share a specific SOP with someone. Now I have in the everything view, an agency wiki right here. It has a knowledge base on onboarding and everything. And it has some SOPs for my teams. Here in marketing, there is actually a template of an SOP and I'm gonna inspire myself and create my SOP on how to write a blog post based on it. If you're interested in getting SOPs, templates, documentation on top of using ClickUp to its full potential and finally understanding the whole scope of how it works and how to build your workspace, you can access ClickUp Master. The link is right in the description. Let's create our SOP. I actually just copy and pasted the SOP that I have stored somewhere else, but it's just to save us time and to show you how it's structured. But you will have your SOP right here. You can actually give it a code if you wanted to. So that's why there's a placeholder right here. Say your marketing team is M and that's the first SOP that's M01 and the version is version one. And if you are to update it, it becomes version two. So that's uh, a way to codify your SOP. Then you can have a video and I really recommend that and use that video and copy and paste the prompt like I showed you to create the written parts right here. You can have all the written parts of the SOP. You can even add a prompt if you actually want to leverage AI. We have our SOP stored right here. And as I told you, if you had different SOPs right here, you'd have to give access to the whole document. Any contractor that comes in, they'd have to see everything. That's why this method is only useful if you don't have sharing and permission limitations and restrictions. Maybe soon in the future, ClickUp will let you share only a specific page. It's probably gonna come in pretty soon. But as of this video, if you wanna share a specific SOP, you have to go with SOPs as tasks. Either way, we can call out these SOPs any way we want. Let's get to a project that we have for a client. If I wanted to call out an SOP in a project of a client, for example, we have to do the sitemap. We're just going to find the task that's related to doing a sitemap. It must be stored right here. And I'm just going to call out this SOP by going right here. Because it's a task, I'm going to click two times at, and I'm going to search that SOP. That SOP should be sitemap design. It's actually right here. And then that SOP is there, you can see it's done and you can add an instruction like follow the SOP and you can put that in bold. If you wanted to, you can highlight it even further because as I told you, the downside of this method is that it's going to be very tiny. So you need to make sure that the person actually sees it. I can turn this into a heading. You're sure that the person will not miss on this SOP. They should be fine. What happens is if I get to start this site mapping and wireframing, all I have to do is open up that and understand how it works. It will pop up the task with that SOP with all the steps to follow through. I called out this SOP and obviously, if you were to save this in your template once and for all, it's always going to be called out. If you were to update this task, it's going to reflect because it's just a link. 
And that's the power of having an SOP library instead of having it stored in the description or the comments. Now I'm going to show you how it works with the document, but it's pretty much the same way. Let's just take this task, for example, and we're just going to call out the document, write a blog post, our SOP just popped up right here. And there you go, it's stored. You just open the document to know how to do this. And I like the way ClickUp handles documents because it's just a pop-up instead of a task. And with the pop-up, you can just close it once you're done. It's also an edge of having them as documents. Let's wrap this up. If I get back to my little diagram, I've made a little ranking of how I prefer my SOPs to be. I'll say the first and second are definitely having them as a library. You are either going to have them as documents or as a task library and call them out in your tasks. Now, out of the two, and that was a very, very hard choice, I'd say the first one is to have them as a task library, because even if the user experience is not as nice, it's in a task, it's not in an actual document, you have the comments on the side, you can handle the granular permissions and you can label them, you can assign them and you can treat them and handle them like tasks, because after all, updating a process is a task in itself. It's say a yearly recurring task to have a look at your processes and update them because as your company changes and evolves, your SOPs will too. If you don't have any permission issues, if everyone at your company can see everything, that's great. You can just give comment access to that document that stores all the SOPs and have your SOPs as docs. I'd say the third is having them as task comments. That way you can leave the description for the actual task and for the actual context of the task. And the last one is having them as a description. As you can see, much, much better to have your SOPs stored in a library if you have to work with freelancers, if you have to outsource, if your company is going to scale and grow and you're going to have to handle different permissions. If you know you're going to stay small and you know everyone can see everything, just store them as documents, add them as a comment in your task and save your tasks as templates so that in the future, each time you trigger that task, it pops up with the SOP. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped you out. And if you want to know more and get to understand ClickUp better, you can download my ClickUp guide. It's right down in the description. If you're already intermediate in ClickUp and you want to become a professional and use it to its full potential, you can just access and get my course, ClickUp Master. It's full of valuable content. It will help you step-by-step -step set up a fully optimized ClickUp workspace. I hope it helped you out. Thanks for watching. Stay productive.